sisters, we've got to stop being hospice care wives. We have to. Today, yet another friend I've learned who got married later in life, and I'm talking 45 and above because it seems that when myself and my friends who have been single women who, yeah, wanted to get married when we were 23 to a nice man who uh, built something with us, it didn't happen. And so we turned 45 and then suddenly here come all these brothers, you know, 40, 45, 50, just Rico Suaves. I mean, complete love bomb. They grabbed my friends. They ran them down the aisle. And today I find out yet another one of their husbands has dropped dead. I mean, I just put it that way. He was already sick when he got with her. And what I'm finding is, is that with a lot of my friends, because we've been professional women, are getting married to these men and they are simply looking for benefits. They're looking to rest and to nest. It's not in sickness and in health, it's in sickness and in death. So they realize that they can't pee anymore or their kidneys are failing or they feel like they are about to have a stroke or have already had one. And then suddenly they meet my beautiful friends who've worked hard to do everything in life, to take care of themselves, uh, to not be one of the four or five black women who are murdered every day by mostly black men. And they come up, meet my friends and they run and get married. And the next thing I know, my friends are dealing with millions of dollars worth of medical bills. Not only dealing with the medical bills, but after these men have passed, here come all their grown ugly kids busting up into my friend's house, breaking their noses, carrying things out of their house, and knowing that their dad was living in a one, living in an efficiency. One of them was living with his mother, goes to live with my friend who has a house of her own, and then he passes away, and then here come all of his grown children and grandchildren kicking in her door to take things because they're certain that she's killed him, even though he's been on kidney dialysis for almost as long as, well, I guess a week after they got married. We've got to stop this because here's the, the thing that we need to, to get in our heads, sisters. If he did not change y'all's baby's diapers when y'all were 23, 24, 27, you don't need to be changing his depends. If he did not push your babies that you had together after y'all got married in that house that y'all got together in a stroller, don't push him around in a wheelchair. Like the last funeral I went to was of a sister, a nurse who married a man who had kids. She had kids. Sister doing just totally fine by herself. Nice, nice condo. Marries him, moves him in. Few years later, he dies. A torso. Diabetes. Had every limb on his body taken off except for his head. She, he was a torso by the time they put him in the casket. She's left with his medical bills. And dealing with his grown kids who feel that even though that condo was already hers before she married him, that they're supposed to be getting something. Stop marrying them. Stop marrying them. If you're not 22 or 23 and y'all are working to build something together, don't do it. Because this is when, when, when black men get 45 in their fifties, they start to realize that they're, they have an expiration date. And that's when they decide that they're going to find the best black woman that they can find, marry you. They make sure you got benefits and you got a place to stay. And then they want to come and sit in their femininity but didn't do anything for you. They gave their youth and all of their health and their years of fertility and the years that they could have built wealth to some thought or just tramped around or bought cars while we were paying extra to stay in safe apartment complexes. We built our, built our careers and built our financial wealth. And then now all of a sudden they want to come in and move into your house and have you to take care of them while they lay up on you. I mean, I could go down the list. I have one friend, uh, married a guy. She was totally doing well by herself, married him two weeks later. He's sick, quits working on her medical insurance. She's got a million dollars worth of medical bills. Uh, another friend married a guy. Oh, he was love bombing her. I was in their freaking wedding. And guess what? Year after going back for their, uh, their one year anniversary, I was going to go back there for it. He laid in the bed and died. Heart attack. Right. Um, another friend married a guy. Soon as she married him, he realized that he was sick. Hmm. He didn't know that beforehand. 
gets with her, gets on her medical insurance, lives off of her. And then as soon as he got well from his illness, he left her and now she's paying him alimony and has to give him a portion of her retirement. Sisters, we got to stop being taken advantage of. We got to stop being hospice care wives. If you want to get with them, go ahead and get with them. If you want to move them in your house, move them in your house. But here's what you don't do. Do not marry him because then he becomes your financial responsibility. And I'm telling you, these black kings, they love to rest in their femininity. They love to come up in your nice house with your fireplace and lay there and have you to nurse them to death. Mm -mm. If you just want to have him and you just want to a cane you just want one here's what you do because he's gonna move into your house and then you're gonna put your uh, money together then he's gonna take your money to buy you an engagement ring with your money uh, uh tell him don't do that take that money and go get his get him a complete physical get a full physical i'm talking teeth and everything because most of these brothers have not been to the doctor since they were playing football and had a physical right in high school in high school and say missing teeth and all this. So look at how much you're going to have to pay to sustain him for the next five years, because most of them are dying like at 50 before 55. So if you marry him later in life, see how much it's going to cost you to take care of him um, and try to look into see what those medical bills are going to be. Okay. Look at his health insurance. If he has any and make sure that he stays on his health insurance and doesn't get on yours because yours most likely is going to be better than his because you will have, you know, built up something and been at your job for a while. Don't put him on your medical benefits. Okay. Once you find out what his health uh, is, then the next thing you do is go get a life insurance policy. No less than $100,000. Get a life insurance policy. Go to an attorney, have a will written up and have him to agree that whatever he walked in with is what he's going to be walking out with. And if he should die before you, which he probably will, then his grown ass ugly kids and grandkids and great grandkids can come and get his things in a trash bag sitting out on the yard and they can come and get all of that. Okay. The insurance policy will be in your name. You will be the beneficiary. Now, if he, you, if you all decide that if something happens to him, you want to give his kids, you know, some of that, then y'all decide that and put it in writing and also have it on video because I can guarantee you this, their daddy could have had prostate cancer and been on kidney dialysis for 27 years. But as soon as he gets with you and moves into your nice house and you clean him all up, and something happens to him, they're going to come running at you and accusing you of taking his life. Sisters, stop being hospice care wives. If you want to be with them, you don't have to marry them. Do not take any financial responsibility for these men that did not take any financial responsibility for you when you were younger and in your 20s. And some of these young girls, y'all trying to get with these, these old men because you want to be able to get their social security after they pass away. Okay, let me warn you against that because some of them owe so much money that you ain't going to be able to get nothing once you finish paying for their medical bills and paying for all of the, the expenses that they have because they are sick. And again, you know, I mean, your granddaddy is fine. You know, it, you know, you love your granddaddy. When I say fine, I mean, like, it's, it's, it's great. Like, I loved hugging my grandfather and being there with my grandfather. But it is something that is just kind of gross about an old man that has not taken care of himself. Because many times if they haven't had a woman to take care of and make them go to the doctor, they miss in teeth. They smell like penicillin, shit, and curry, right? Coming out of their noses, hair all up places, missing the side teeth and all that. You know, stop taking them in. You know, don't let anybody use you. You've done the work. You've worked hard. You've been that worker bee and you've been a, a busy ant working. Don't let him come in and take advantage of you. Don't be a hospice care wife.